<laughs> Welcome to Season 3, Episode 3 of the H-Town Rundown. I'm Nick Thiel. And I'm Jackson Parker. And, and we're your hosts. hosts. In this edition, we'll be taking a look at fall sports, a new community spotlight, and an update on the mask mandate and points with Parker. This is Goth TV. <laughs> Get the form into the nurse on Monday, please. The drama department opened Tuck Everlasting last night and will have shows through the weekend. Tickets to the show are available at the Lyric Theater. Break a leg to Miss Hamlin and her thespians. Before we forget, recent news includes the announcement of the homecoming court. The men's include seniors Abigail Borland, Madison Trammell, Corey Parker, uh, Anna Kate Baker, Chasey Hudson, Sydney Jones, Kennedy Campbell, J.C. Wilson, Shelby Eddington, Sierra Miller, Alaya Simpson, and Charlie Zadamos. Congratulations to these ladies and Queen Chloe Hooten. Homecoming is October 22nd. T-shirts are on sale with the cheerleaders and are $18. See a cheerleader to order yours. Orders are due by October 8th. As you can tell, we are wearing masks, which means changes have been made in the mask mandate. Let's go to Lainey Barrett and Emily Hargate with another look on that. I'm Lainey Barrett. And I'm Emily Hargett. We're going to be taking a look at how the students and teachers are feeling about the new voluntary mask wearing. Yeah, we're still running really low. It tends to trend downward at this point. We're hoping it stays that way and we can just stay with voluntary mask wearing. I think our school district choosing to go to optional mask gives everybody the opportunity to suit what's best for their lifestyle. If you need the protection, you can wear one to school and if you want to take the risk or if you're vaccinated, then that covers you too. I think we have great kids and we have super students and they've done a really good job with the masks and they're doing a great job without the masks. I think the option of mask is a good thing because it brings back normalcy within our school and it's just refreshing to see people without masks on again. I enjoy being able to breathe again, especially allergy season has come upon us. So <laughs> I'm actually able to like breathe out of my nose and not have to breathe through a mask. The masks being optional probably makes them happier. I noticed that as soon as it became optional, most kids got rid of their masks. I wore my mask mostly this year because I'm vaccinated, but I, I didn't want to be a carrier and give it to students who weren't vaccinated. I still wear mine even though they're not so that I can protect myself as well as them. I choose to keep my mask on, that way we can stay in school. It's been really different seeing people's faces. I hope our students uh, come to more activities and events, those kind of things, with the mask being off, be a little more comfortable. That's our goal. We want school to be normal, and that's what we're trying to do is just make it as normal as possible. We really already had a great student turnout at ball games. It'll be interesting to see in the pep rally next week to see if more people get up and be more involved. Even though our first pep rally, you all really had to work to get students up. Um, the second pep rally, students did a lot better. Um, so I think it will be very, very interesting next Friday to see how students respond when they go in there without a mask and if they bring the same enthusiasm, I think it's going to be awesome, it's going to be even louder, um, which will increase a great environment. This is Emily Hargett. And this is Lainey Barrett. Coming to you from GOG TV. Hey Jackson, have you heard from Mr. Parker lately? No, but I think he has a new points with Parker, with clarification on intervention days and how students at HHS qualify. Mm. Take it away, Mr. Parker. Parents and students, I want to take this opportunity to talk to you about HHS Intervention Reward Days in the Points for Parker segment. We had our first of these days on September 17th. We had about 55% of our students that received the first reward day. The remaining students attended school. Our next Intervention Reward Day is scheduled for Friday, October 15th. We have seven of these days strategically placed about every four and a half weeks throughout the school year. You can see how we have placed these days throughout the year as you view this group. Each day has three goals to qualify the students. Students must meet two out of the three of the qualifying goals in order to receive the reward day. The purpose of these days is to re reward students that are performing well and or improving academically. 
Students that do not meet two out of three goals will attend school for interventions to assist them with their learning. Teachers will be available to work with students in the more of a small group or one-on-one -on -one environment on these intervention days. Each day has different criteria developed by my HHS leadership team to allow students to gain a reward day if they miss the previous reward day. Again, these days are all about growth and getting better. We focus on grades, state and national assessments, attendance, and discipline. All of these factors weigh heavily on student performance and achievement. You may be wondering about ZAP and Saturday School when you view the rubric. ZAP stands for Zeros Aren't Productive. We need students to submit their assignments on, on the set due dates when they are due so teachers can grade and provide timely feedback. Feedback is the way students learn best and the feedback needs to occur before students are assessed. We establish ZAP as an accountability system for when students miss due dates. ZAP is every Wednesday after school from 2 to 3.30. This one and a half hour time period is for students to complete their missing assignments for their teachers. This prevents them from getting a zero in the grade book, grade book, which could lead to failing grades. Saturday school is a higher level of this, and it runs from 8 to noon each Saturday. Parents, we need your support with these systems and interventions. We want all students to learn and achieve at high levels. We want to reward them when they are successful and meet goals. We want to provide a structured time and place for learning to continue outside the school day so they can catch up on missing assignments and not miss lessons. Parents, if you don't already know, you can be an observer of your child's grades, missing assignments, etc. in Canvas. For more information on how to set yourself up as an observer, please go to this link. Please be su supportive of these measures as we are trying to find ways to keep education growing as well as teach student responsibility and accountability and celebrate their growth and improvement. Please keep in mind that if your student does not qualify for a reward day and does not come to school, the absent, absence does count against them and will have penalties moving forward for future reward days. Thank you. The fair was this past weekend and annually it means our ag department is in full swing showing animals. Absolutely, Nick. Here's Brooke Boyd, Alexa Ramsey, and Colette Campbell who talked with the ag teachers about their successful showing. Like usual, the Harrison FFA program has had a successful livestock showing at the fair this fall. We're in the middle of livestock showing and the fairs. That's been going on here quite a bit. And uh, this next week we go to AYE. Uh, Mr. Hale will be taking a group over there. So we get our animals towards the end of the school year in the spring, and they have to take care of all their animals throughout the entire summer, have them all ready as far as feed. They have to weigh a certain amount. Then they have to have their skin and hair perfect. Um, they have to break animals to, to lead if you're showing a, a goat or a calf. If you're showing a pig, you have to train the pigs to walk. Well, Alyssa Martin, uh, she made this sale and placed first in her class at the Boone County Fair. Uh, Chloe Hubbard placed second in her class and made the sale with her goat. We also, we're doing virtual. We've got two teams that are qualified for a uh, national competition are Vet Science and Horse, and they're doing the virtual part of it. Uh, in Vet Science, you had to be in the top 21 in the nation to get to go to the next level, which we did. We also are going to the State Fair. We'll, we'll end up at the end of October going to Indianapolis, Indiana, and competing up there in the, in the national contest. That's our national convention. We've probably taken 15, 16, of our students with us. With Gob TV, I'm Brooke Boyd. Congratulations to all those students and their show animals. For show, sure. well, Jackson, the weather is cooling and fall sports are underway. Some are wrapping up while others are getting closer to the upcoming postseason tournament play. That's true, Nick. So let's first congratulate the Lady Goblin golf team who finished the season 4A conference champions. They competed at state earlier this week and finished fifth in state. Congratulations to Coach Don Price and his golfing Lady Goblins. Jackson, I hear the tennis district brackets are out and they're going to be played Monday and Tuesday of next week. That's true. Let's go to Abby Borland and Aspen Kaufman for the fall sports update. As of right now, we have two regular season meets left. We have a, with Chili Pepper on Saturday and then the next Saturday we go to Springdale and then we'll have conference and state. 
our season's going really well. Um, as of our last meet, all every single girl on the team had a season PR, and um, some girls had almost two minutes off of their the meet before that. So that's great. The two meets that we've had our entire team there to run, we have won both of those meets. One we actually tied, and then one with our six man breaking the tie. And then the last meet, the same team, we actually beat by one point. So. That means that was a team from our conference. So that means in our conference right now, we should be the number one team going into conference, which is great. Both the boys and girls tennis teams have had incredible success this season. Will Mahoney went undefeated in conference and is going into the boys singles tournament as the one overall seed with number two singles, Renan Davidson, not far behind as the six seed. For boys doubles, Anderson Grayson Dupre landed the three seed and Connor Phillips and Andrew Durst the five seed. Girls doubles includes Cameron Casey and Abby Borland as the four seed and Emmy Bell and Yetta Krayman as the six seed. Mael Bartholomew landing the one overall seed and Elise Bell the three seed. Following a crushing collapse at the hands of Farmington, the Goblins are looking to bounce back tonight at Alma. The Airedales and the Goblins have met every year since 1983, with the Airedales holding a 28-17-2 record over the Goblins since then. Alma has equally high stakes in this game, winning back-to-back -back games for the first time since the end of the 2019 season. The Goblins are looking to win a close game tonight, with the Alma Airedales being no joke, and it's definitely going to be a great game. The Goblins suffered a heartbreaking loss last week and faced a tough opponent tonight, but that doesn't mean the drive for five is over. Check this out. I'm Jackson Parker. And I'm Andrew Durst, and we have an exclusive interview with Goblin football coach Joel Wells. So, Coach Wells, I heard the Goblins are doing a new campaign this year, the Drive for Five. Why don't you tell us about that? Well, you know, uh, we've won four consecutive conference championships, three in a row uh, undefeated in the conference. And uh, so this year would be our fifth. Uh, I don't think it's ever been done in school history. And there's a reason why it hadn't been done. It's very difficult to do. And, but uh, that's our challenge this year, and that's our goal. My name is Nicholas Steele, and in order to show the support God TV has for the Drive for Five, we shave my head. Did you know the Goblins are competing for a fifth straight conference championship? 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, and now the 2021 season. We challenge each business, school club, church, civic organization, family, and all Goblin fans to show support for Coach Wells, his staff, and the Goblins as they drive for five. Businesses, if you support the Goblins, put it on your signboards or marquees for passerby to see. Post a video like the Booster Club that shows support and tag the HHS Goblin Golf TV accounts so we can share your support with others. We received our first one this week from NARMC and can't wait to see the other Goblin fans in our community support this team as they drive for five. Won't you show them support? Our Goblin Booster Club board proudly supports our Harrison Goblins in their drive for five. Hello, Goblin Nation. We at North Arkansas Regional Medical Center support the Harrison Goblin football team while they drive or buy. Speaking of football fields, have you heard of Fields of Faith? Yeah, that sounds familiar. Well, October 13th at 6 p.m., we're going to be holding the Fields of Faith at FS Garrison Stadium. Oh, right. There will be multiple churches there, so you won't have to miss a night of fun at the stadium. Before we go, we've gotten word that we are all systems go for a normal hoko. Yes, sir. That means start planning your class and club clubs and let Mrs. Milburn or Mrs. Hamlin know by October 15th if your club or group intends to have a float or a walking group in the homecoming parade. Well, that's all for this edition of H-Town Rundown. I'm Jackson Parker. And I'm Nick Thiel. And we'll be seeing you.